But first, you know politicians are in trouble when they start lying to protect themselves. And you know they're in big trouble when they give up lying about themselves because they know they're not going to be believed anymore and instead start lying about their opponents. First, the Albanese government started lying to you about its response to the release of 141 plus foreign criminals into the community. And now in a grubby attempt to deflect community outrage, the government is resorting to despicable lies about Peter Dutton. Yesterday and again this morning, the government claimed that the opposition leader was somehow a protector of pedophiles. Now, this is a disgusting claim to make because it's shameless and it's an unforgivable lie. But that didn't stop Claire O'Neill, the incompetent Home Affairs Minister, in the parliament yesterday. We heard on Monday, we saw on Monday, the opposition, led by the Leader of the Opposition, come into the parliament and vote to protect pedophiles over children. That's what they did. Voted to protect pedophiles over children. And that slur was then repeated this morning by the aged care minister, Annika Wells. The Home Affairs Minister has accused Peter Dutton of being a protector of pedophiles. Do you agree with that? Yes. Obviously, this is the latest tactic from an increasingly rattled, indeed almost unhinged government. And it must have had the blessing of the Prime Minister and his office, a PM who's been shell-shocked and clueless himself ever since his voice was so roundly rejected. And I say that because when ministers repeat lines, there's a strategy. The government says that the child rapist, known only as NZYQ, who triggered the whole High Court case decision, that gave the government the excuse it needed to release all these foreign criminals, the government says he's only in the country because Peter Dutton gave him a visa. Now, that's completely false. He's only in the country because Labor soft on borders and by dismantling the Howard era protections, Labor, not Peter Dutton, let in 50,000 illegal boat people of whom NZYQ was just one. Now, under Labor by 2013, when the coalition was elected, there were some 30,000 illegal boat people still in Australia. So the incoming government issued them with temporary protection visas. Note that term, temporary protection visas, because the coalition wanted all the illegal arrivals by boat out of the country as soon as possible. Labor's attempt to suggest that as a Home Affairs Minister, Dutton somehow singled out the pedophile NZYQ for special protection is nothing but a brazen lie. And it's a sign of just how desperate the government has become. In fact, under Dutton, NZYQ applied for a permanent protection visa and he was rightly refused on character grounds. Here is Peter Dutton on this very point on Sydney Radio this morning. In relation to the case that's before the High Court, the you know the NZ, known as the NZYQ, mm. and you've just detailed some of his story, but uh, don't forget that he arrived here on a boat mm. in 2012 uh, that we inherited from Labor, people who were put into the community on bridging visas. So uh, I, I kept this bloke in custody. He didn't go out uh, under my watch, and uh, I didn't concede the point to the High Court that he couldn't be returned back to his country of origin, which meant that there was no indefinite detention. Mm. And that's the foolishness of, uh, of the immigration minister's position because he has conceded the point to the High Court that this person couldn't be returned. And therefore, that's what triggers the High Court to make their decision that because he's stateless and couldn't be returned back to his country of origin, uh, he can't be held indefinitely. And that, that's the stuff up that the government's now presided over. So. Prime Minister's got 140 with 300 odd more ready to go mm. to put out onto the street. It turns out that there was no need for them to make this decision. Remember, the High Court decision related only to the man who raped a 10 year old boy in Australia, not to all the other detainees that this government has let out anyway. And as for the claim that Dutton voted against legislation to keep pedophiles away from schools, well, the coalition voted against the government's rushed, botched bill on Monday because they said it wasn't tough enough and because they said it was preempting the release of the High Court's judgment the very next day. Here is Dutton on this lie as well. 
The argument is that we uh, wanted to vote against a bill in the parliament. Mm. The reason we wanted to vote against it was because we had proposed tighter restrictions in the bill and that we didn't think the bill should be passed until the government beefed it up. And you remember last week, uh, or the last sitting week, the government completely botched their efforts to try and deal with these people. They've now let uh, some of them into the community without ankle bracelets on. Uh, they had this one missing person. They didn't know where that person is. They've now located him. Let's not forget, as a former Queensland police detective, Peter Dutton was in the sex offender squad. He tracked down and arrested pedophiles. He didn't protect them. And as Home Affairs Minister, he deported hundreds of criminals. He didn't let them out. And he set up a special unit to combat the exploitation of children. So, so what's happening here then? What's happening here? Well, given Dutton's very clear record on this stuff, why is Labor trying to make this all about him? And I'll tell you why. They're doing it because Dutton is cutting through. Because this issue is an Achilles heel for Labor, and Dutton's showing up Labor's incompetence and voters have noticed. So Labor's backroom strategists would have said this week, look, we've, we've got a shocker of a news poll. We're really taking water because of this detention mess. The coalition's now 50-50 with us. We saw that on Monday. So to get back some ground, we've got to target Peter Dutton, and so they have. They can't defend their hopeless minister, Claire O'Neill, so they try and go on the attack. Every day, this government looks more and more like a one-termer. And this contemptible smear campaign shows how much Anthony Albanese deserves to lose, given today he refused to apologise for Dutton over this slur. And by letting it run, he's all but authorised this low-rent hit job that's not even worthy of state politics, not even worthy of university politics, let alone our national parliament.